three on one side, two on the other. There's loads of theories about why. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the Hackamer that we have for sale at Enzo Martial Arts. I'm going to be talking about what options there are, give you some tips on sizing, explain which styles of martial arts would train in Hackamer, and at the end, I'll put together a short montage of people training in the styles that were Hackamer. Hi, my name's Doug Swift. I've been doing martial arts for the past 33 years and the owner of Enzo Martial Arts for the past 16 years. If you're liking this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel and get all the latest videos and updates from Enzo Martial Arts. So let's get into this video and learn all about the Hakama we have for sale at Enzo. So for this video, I thought I'd borrow my buddy Eric to do a little bit of modeling He's not the most charismatic guy, so he's just going to stand there modelling the Hakama and the geese that you usually wear with them. I'll do all the talking and let you know all about the Hakama that we have. So Hakama are traditionally worn by quite a lot of Japanese styles. Now the ones that are mostly known for it are styles like Jiu-Jitsu, traditional Japanese Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido and the sword styles like Kendo, Kenjitsu. Um, Eido, things like that, So, and there's a whole loads of different sword styles. You also see them in Kudo, the Japanese archery, and you know, various, like, uh, more, there's more and more and more styles that get more and more sort of rare and obscure, especially in the West. But yeah, Aikido, Jiu Jitsu, the sword styles, you do see them pop up in Ninjutsu as well, tend to be the most, like, commonly known styles that wear Hakama. So, what are Hakama? What where do they come from? How have they merged into martial arts? Well, really, it's just the style of traditional Japanese wear. Now, they would be worn by men and women, and they are almost like an like an overskirt, effectively, even though it's not a skirt. But yeah, it's something you just wear over the standard standard trousers. In martial arts, they've kind of been brought into these traditional martial arts because it is just like standard traditional wear. So it would be something that was worn, I think, originally by the upper classes and then slowly over time they merged into across all across the board so you would get like rice farmers and um, like uh, yeah people who ride horses and all the rest of them wearing them um, and these Hakama I think as far as I know are known as like horseback riding Hakama because they've got the split now there are other types of Hakama which don't have the split at all um, but that's you won't see them in martial arts at all the ones that you see in martial arts are the ones with the split um, I'll get a pair hang on the, there we go so they do have a split so they're effectively like crazily baggy trousers um, but yeah you see them very rarely in the west you will you see them worn outside of martial arts training like Japanese martial arts training now there's a few features on Hakama that's really important to sort of understand and know. One thing will be on sizing. Now sizing can be very tricky and it doesn't necessarily always relate to the size of gi that you have, even though they are sized in the same way. So you will get you will get Hakama that are sized like 5180, 4170, things like that, and that'll be the same as the gi that you're wearing. The 170 relates to the full height of the person. So you might get 5180 Hakama, which would relate to a large as well. Sometimes you see them small, medium, and large. So 5180 would be a large, um, someone that's 180 centimeters tall. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you want those size. Now, styles like Aikido, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, even Ninjutsu, they tend to wear them slightly higher. You don't want the Hakama rubbing right down on the floor because you're running around, you're doing lots of throws, you're like grappling with people. So those styles tend to wear them a bit higher, almost like ankle length. Just keep them off the floor, it stops them from getting like rubbed on the floor and worn out and it makes them last longer. So yeah, a lot of the styles, those styles, the more dynamic styles that wear Hakama, will wear them a bit higher. The ones where there's a lot less movement, like Eido, say like some of the sword styles, Kudo was fairly static in terms of the person moving. They tend to wear them a bit lower, so they're almost touching the ground. So you do have to play with the size of the Hakama a little bit. But like I say, as a standard rule, the size will match your gi. 5180 gi, you're gonna have a 5180 Hakama. As a general rule. 
Ideally, if you can come in the shop and try them on, that would be perfect, and then you can get exactly the size you want. If not, we'll do our absolute best to give you the best size you can if you've got any questions on the phone or by email. So at Enzo Martial Arts, we do sell the black Hakamo, which are the most popular, but we also do sell blue. There are some styles of Aikido where they only wear blue Hakama. The majority of the Jiu Jitsu, as far as I've seen, wear, wear the black ones, Ninjutsu as well. The sword ones seem to vary. Now, some styles do have them that you wear the black until you get to a certain grade, then you move to blue. I don't know, it seems very, it does seem to depend from style to style, association to association, but we do sell the black Hakama, and the blue. We can get the white as well. Now we don't tend to keep them in stock because they're very, very rare that people actually use them, but we can get white Hakama if you want them for the stars like Shintaro. Just pointing out a few features of the Hakama that's worth noting. Now they do have these long, long side pockets. I'll move Eric. Uh, long side pouches. Now this, this isn't like a pocket or anything really, it's just so you can put your hands inside if you want, adjust your gi so you can keep it looking smart and straight um, and also if you're a little bit cold, if you're teaching a lot you can just shove them in there but don't get caught obviously. So yeah, they do have these long kind of gaps on the side of the Hakama. Another feature that's worth knowing, which should be the same on all Hakama, is that you have five pleats at the front to the back, but you have three on one side and two on the other. Now this fits with Japanese culture, like asymmetrical like fashions or design as it were, which fits into a lot of Japanese culture where this asymmetrical design exists all over the place. And now that I've mentioned it, and if you didn't know about it before, you'll start noticing it in loads of places across, across Japan. But yeah, they are asymmetrical pleats, three on one side, two on the other. There's loads of theories about why you need this side, some people will say because you need more room to get over the horse, so you need more room on one side or the other. As far as I know, it is just literally a design thing about being asymmetrical with Japanese. Now you'll notice with these ones, they've got a kind of stitching on the front here and here and here. Now this is purely to just hold the pleats in while they're packing. I've taken these out for these particular Hakama just so you can see exactly how they fit because they obviously don't fit very well. So when you do get your Hakama from us, you will need to take the stitching out just so the Hakama fall properly. Now, once these are out, obviously the pleats have got their life of their own then and it is possible that the pleats, pleats come out. So you do have to look after them. Again, if you do decide to wash them, it will wash the pleats out. So you are gonna have to do a lot of careful ironing. So I do know people that have Hakama that really avoid trying to wash them, maybe just get them kind of steam cleaned or just give them a wipe, you know, with a cloth just to keep those pleats in as long as possible and just keep re-ironing, re-ironing. Just a little word of warning that when you do wash them, you are gonna lose the pleats. Again, when you take, take the stitching out initially, then the pleats are on their own. Some people I know don't tend to hang them, they tend to just put them over the back of a chair. That seems to be the best best way to just hold the pleats in and then the weight of the Hakama just keep those pleats where they are. You're gonna, gonna have to iron them a fair bit, it just comes part and parcel with, with owning Hakama. Another feature is the backboard that you get on Hakama. Now in the old days you could get kind of different backboards but these days they're all very very similar which is just a bit of board that will just stick on your back and I'll show you Eric's in a minute and that obviously you, you, you tie that on with, with the OBs that you get with the hats. Come on Eric, go on. There we go, so you can see the backboard just sticking up here which helps you tie the belt on, um, keep, it, keep it nice and flat on your back. Again, like these aren't the most comfortable things to roll on, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but usually when people have got onto a Hakama, they're doing slightly less training and more teaching anyway. So your Hakama will take less abuse. There are some styles obviously that start you off on them straight away, but most clubs, just sort Eric out. Yeah, most clubs, you, it'll usually be black belts that get onto wearing Hakama. So you are doing less training, even though it does take a bit of, bit of sort of training, getting used to wearing Hakama and training Hakama. Usually most people's sort of level of training sort of dips a bit because they're doing a lot more teaching. So um, yes, you want to be movable in them. You want to be able to move around, but you, the amount that you're doing will be less and less. The style of Japanese Jiu Jitsu that I used to do 
when the black belts and above used to compete or do more training they used to take their hacks off and compete without the hacks on just with just with the black belt in that style it was more about wearing your hacks and teaching wearing them um, so you will find that you'll do less and less while you're wearing them that's obviously not the case for a lot of styles especially aikido is still pretty active so it does take a bit of getting used to training wearing hack masks. So Enzo Martial Arts, we have a wide range of martial arts equipment and clothing and we do our absolute best to cater for all of like the majority of styles out there, especially the ones that are local to us. So for the Aikido and Japanese Jiu Jitsu guys, as well as the Black Hakama, we also have the before mentioned Blue Hakama. We also sell the lightweight Judo Gi. So even though it's a Judo Gi, it's mainly used by Aikido styles and Japanese Jiu Jitsu, kindly modeled by Eric. Now nearly all those styles will train on mats and having a pair of Zori is really useful to get on and off the mat with. So we also sell Zori. For the ninjutsu guys, we do also sell black judo gis, which are really popular, and the heavyweight karate gis. We sell a whole wide range of weapons, but for the Aikido, Jiu-Jitsu, and ninjutsu guys, we sell the white oak bokkens and the white oak joes. And for those stars, we also sell bow staffs, tantos, hambos, and forged and hand-folded katana. So as promised at the beginning of the video, here is a short montage of people training in Hakma in their Japanese martial arts. Thanks very much for watching. I hope it was useful. I hope you learned loads about Hakama that we have for sale at Enzo. If you like this video, click the little icon, subscribe to this channel, and get all the latest videos and updates from Enzo Martial Arts. Thanks very much, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.